Welcome to Cross-Platform Podcast, where we discuss how to solve productivity problems across platforms. I'm Augusto Pinot. And I'm Mark And Excuse me. Today we're talking about reading material. So we're talking about the applications, how to read, and how we manage those things. What's similar, common, what is different in our different words dealing with papers and I would like to start with the similar, and the similar currently is Fitly. Fitly is where I get my RSS feed, um, and I have tons of them, and they go on there, and I try to process them and read them. If they are short read, get, get read on there. If there is something that I want to read again, then it moves to a second collection bucket that is, in my case, called Instapaper, where I've been collecting files for longer than I care to admit. I was one of the first people when Mark Orman created Instapaper to sign up, and I've been an Instapaper user since, and I have folders of folders of folders of content of web articles, mostly. So how about you, and what happened with your Feedly? Uh, I use Feedly as well. Uh, I, I do enjoy it. I have come back and forth and back and forth for it, and just to provide a little background for people, what Feedly is. Feedly is an RSS feed um, feed reader. RSS stands for Real Simple Synd- Syndication. And what it does is it allows, when you publish to a website, a feed or a specific set of HTML or XML can be published out to tell a feed reader to say, hey, here's a page, here's an article, here's its topic, here's its content, here's its graphics and pull it together or be pulled by one of these feed consolidation tools. One of the most popular ones in the past was one called Google Reader, which got sunsetted by Google. Uh, there are a lot of them out there, but Feedly is probably one of the most popular ones uh, on the website. And it gives you the ability to not only subscribe to websites, but also search across other people's uh, saved topics, put together boards of generalized topics, and just basically allow you to peruse a much larger footprint of the internet than you could just manually going from site to site. It's also very good at telling you what, when new content has come out. You can find something that has been published within the last couple hours where you may not find it manually surfing for it for weeks. So I use Feedly as well. I use it on Android. I use it on my tablet. I use it on my PC. And it is an excellent tool, but getting back into it, and this is one of the things, uh, if you listen to our last show, we were talking a little bit about how we want to really start focusing on just the topics that are current today. Feedly is a great way to find out what's going on within people's minds, what's going on within media, uh, what are the topics of interest. So getting back into this tool and setting it back up again, raised an interesting question in my mind that I know I've asked in the past, but I've never gotten gotten to an answer. And here's the question. These feed tools, whether it's Feedly, whether it's Pocket, which is the reader I use, whether it's Instapaper, give us a great way to accumulate a large amount of con- content, a library level of content in a very short period of time. While that's extremely useful, it almost lends itself to being a digital hoarder. You can just accumulate stuff that you may never go back and look at again. And especially since it's content that's being scraped from across the internet, it's information that often that can be out of date very quickly and even worse than useless. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to talk a little bit about how we use these tools, what our struggles are with them, and some advice that we can give some people around if they're starting to think about doing this. How can they really get some some productive time out of these tools? So I'm I'm agreeing. There is a potential for hoarding. There is a potential for dump their stuff that you're never going to read. Um, I probably have both. Okay. (laughs) But it is still a great tool. There are articles in there that I have referred multiple times. And there are moments that... 
I am on research mode because I'm writing an article because I want an answer to a client that after I read them, I organize them in folders that allows me to search for the folder or allows you to search for the keyword. So for example, I have quote in this podcast and many places, there is an article from Paul Graham that I quote a lot. It is in there. Is there other things that I haven't probably ever read again? I'm sure. That said, it takes less time for me to find again the, that information that I already review than try to go to Google and find a whole new set. Um, so because of that, for me, it's very useful to have Instapaper. It's better than go and get fresh articles, new articles, maybe. Um, the things that get there are usually things that I will want to read again. So for example, Federico Vitici writes a, a long, extensive review of iOS uh, releases, okay? Everyone is a big number, okay? It's a 17 pages, 20 pages thing, okay? It's, it's, not a, it's not a difficult read, okay? But it's a very good read. And it's something that when it comes out, I tend to read a couple of times. So it is nice to have it there that I can put it offline and all that. I begin using Instapaper uh, because of traveling, okay? Because I got in the planes, lost the internet, and, and Instapaper had them all there. So it didn't matter if I was connected or not connected. To this day, it's great. It's, that's my... So I tend to collect in there Monday to Saturday. Most of the times it's collect in there. And then Sunday morning, I wake up very early and then process that as it's any other inbox. That is the time it's it's then full of stuff that I want to read that I already look. Not everything is interesting, but at least was processed from my feed reader and it's the stuff that I think I want to read. So that's the main use that I have for those articles. So that that brings me to probably the dichotomy between the two tools, whether it's Instapaper and Feedly or it's Instapaper and Pocket. Pocket and Instapaper don't have the ability to pull feeds in on their own. The stuff that gets in there is manually curated by you. Mm -hmm. So here's the question that comes to my mind is that why wouldn't we have one tool that does why wouldn't you have a tool that could not only pull the feeds in, but then turn them into self-contained versions of those feeds, store them? Why do you think there's a difference between the two tool sets? There has been attempts to one solution, and I have always run in the opposite direction because of the process for me. The, for me, there are two different, very different processes. One is to clean the RSS feed, process the RSS feed. The second one is to grab the article and digest it and share it. So there is articles that I share on Personal Productivity Club, PPC. Okay, there are articles that I share with my clients. And those is another kind of articles that I want to keep. Why? Because Multiple times, the client call back and say, hey, you share an article with me and I can't find it. Okay. And they were like, for the love of mm -hmm. God, <laughs> okay. which article did I? But that's all the information you have. That's all the information they have. And now somehow it's your job to fix it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's fine. But that allows me to short the amount of time because it, that article could have been shared via email via text, via telegram, you know? So how did I share that? I don't know. It's sometimes much faster to ask, what was the article about? Oh, this is what I remember. And then search there on my Insta paper and find the articles. Not only that, because they save a copy, that allows me now to forward it in PDF or whatever I want. So that also make it easier for that. Mm -hmm. And that is a 
value that I add when I share these articles, because when I share these articles, I will not send an article to you, for example, unless I think it's something very relevant. And it's not like I just forward my uh, RSS. I have shared articles with you, but it thinks that, oh, wow, this is something that I would love for art to see or to discuss with me. That's the only reason for me to share anything. So mm -hmm. I love the idea of have the processing on the inbox and then the processing of the articles as two completely different areas, tasks, even software. Yeah, this is one of those interesting challenges that I see with the overlap of the two platforms. Uh, Pocket is very good at turning something into almost like an offline readable so source. And in many cases, you can't just read it offline. You can, ha you can turn any text piece of content that you put into it into text-to-speech and basically turn any website into a podcast, which is kind of nice. There is more and more overlap in the functionality I'm finding. For example, Feedly, you can go through and you can store the link itself, and depending on how much of a descriptive content is in the, the RSS feed, you have all that stored as well. But you can't take the image of the actual site itself. It won't go through and, and scrape the site and capture the content for later. So you're absolutely right. If you're trying to do something that's a research focus, where you need the this set of information, even if it goes away from its original source, Tools like Instapaper and Pocket are perfect for that. Uh, that becomes that secondary level of, of storage, which is really useful. Uh, now, you can also go through, I mean, we, we keep talking about these two applications, but there are a plethora of different applications that Feedly, for example, can interface to. I can send stuff mm -hmm. over to OneNote. I can send stuff over to other applications as well. And that, I can automate things. So that if I flag it, it automatically goes out to something. So if I'm curating information or doing something on a repeating basis, like say I'm doing competitive analysis or topical analysis, uh, this type of a tool can be extremely useful. And one of the things that we're seeing now is tools like Feedly are integrating AI. So that's my mm -hmm. next question is, what do you think the potential of using AI and these kinds of tools are, and what's some good examples that you can think where it would be helpful? I'm a big fan of AI. The problem with AI is that most of the people trying to use AI don't understand technology enough to be able to use AI. And that's where a very powerful tool it's going to lose the power. That said, let me give you an example. If you open, for example, there is on Instacart a folder, okay, of articles about the Pan Pilot. Okay, why? Because that's how long I've been using Instacart. <laughs> Instapaper. Okay. And and it's a device that I feel nostalgia. So Sometimes nice articles comes and I save them. Now, being able to say, if I'm going to write an article and I want to mention that and say, go to my folder here, read these articles and give me the five highlights. That will save me hours. I may have not read them in years. So that kind of things are very useful. Things like, okay, grab now my Insta paper, okay? and I want you to post articles, okay, or or briefs of these articles, okay, once a week, okay. That's something that is going to be very powerful. That said, most of users yet don't know how to do many of the things they can do with AI. Many of the people I work with for and don't know yet really what to get out of AI. And I'm going to say even some of the people who are coding for AI don't know really the uses. They know how to code it. They can deal with the AI and produce results. But when you dig into 
Okay, they are the technical. They know the technicalities of, but they yet have not fully connect with the other side. That mm -hmm. is, what is the use for? I can get all this data and give you a result. Okay, great. Why do I want that? And why am I going to do with the result? Those two questions, most of the time, are not answered, and it's nothing to do with AI. Is to do where where AI is right now. It is the users in general are not, you know, fully trained, fully understandable, fully capable of using the power of. Yeah, I, I agree. Looking at looking at the capabilities right now, where I would find this most useful, and it's one of the things I'm going to start looking into, which unfortunately is hidden behind a paywall, which is not all that surprising because it does have a cost attached to it. Uh, but when you look at some of the tools that we've got here, being able to tell an AI to look at a collection of articles that you have, have it go through and read that set of articles and consolidate that together into a topical overview of that particular grouping, that's, that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. It has to be taken with a, a bit of a grain of salt because again you're looking for an interpretation of that content where it's up to the ai to make that interpretation and you're going to accept that that interpretation is accurate but it's certainly better especially when you have a large collection of articles around the topic to get a just a good summary and a rapid overview summary correct so as we think about some of these functions, and specifically, I'm looking, I'm looking at Feedly for this purpose, uh, but for some of the other tools as well, what's one thing that you, on a regular basis, use Feedly for that you think your regular Feedly user may not use it for? And I'll give you a chance to think about it as I, because uh, I'll tell you mine. One of the things that I like to do is I like to take YouTube channels and put them into Feedly. Because by grabbing the URL for a YouTube channel and putting it into a Feedly uh, feed folder, then not only can I see when new episodes are released in YouTube, but whatever descriptive content is put into the YouTube episode or the, the video, that's pulled into my Feedly. So I can then read that description very easily. It's, it's actually a little easier than it is reading it on YouTube. And I can get to the video right, right away. That gives me a nice consolidated location to be able to monitor multiple channels rather than just having them, you know, having to bounce out to YouTube. And I can work those into folders with other regular RS, RSS feeds around the same topics. So I can have a folder of productivity, you know, productivity feeds, some of them websites, some of them news articles, some of them YouTube channels, and it all falls into the same bucket. How about you? I was going to say I do I do that too, but I will say for me is the sort on the folders. And that allows me to not read the RSS feed in any particular order based on the general articles, but I read them based by topic. So I have, I don't know, 18, 20 folders of different topics. And when I read, I don't read on the order that they reach fitly. I read them on the order they are on that folder. Because what that allows me is to read all that is related to management together, all that is related to productivity together, all that is related with technology together. Instead of mm -hmm. reading, you know, one article of technology, one article of management, that my brain do not have the same ability to process at high speed if I read the same topic than if I read one other topic, one other, other topic. Yeah, uh, that's that ability to go through and rapidly process through articles is one of the things I really like about Feedly. Uh, when you go into a folder or if you pull a feed and there's maybe like I'm looking at right, right now, my Android feed has 593 articles in it. I'm not reading 593 articles any day, you know, anytime soon. But what I can do is I can flip it around through the sort, 
t- put the oldest ones up there, open the mm-hmm. first oldest one. And then as I advance through each one, just by moving to the next article, it marks the previous one as red and it keeps me going. That right. type of thing can be really useful because then I can not only capture the feeds, but I can process them very rapidly. And I mm-hmm. have a two, two-tier storage method then for what I do with that article. If I'm reading an article and it's just interesting, but there's nothing really to keep, I'll just flip to the next article. If there's something worth adding to my library, as per se, I'll send it to Pocket. If there's something immediately relevant to something I'm working on, I'll send it to Pocket and to OneNote, because OneNote, I'll put it to use for other purposes. But I have that functionality right there through Feedly. And it gives me that opportunity to go through and process very quickly. You can tie this thing to pretty much anything. And I I know this is turning really into a Feedly episode, but this kind of a reader, whether it's this or other ones, this functionality is pretty common. To be able to go through and tie it to, let's say, for example, Reddit Reddit feeds and be able to monitor those as they come through. That's, again, really useful when we're dealing with large volumes of incoming information. Correct. And, 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 and I think, again, if you read, you watch YouTube channels, you read a lot of website articles, I think things like Fitly are unvaluable. That said, let me try to jump us to the second part of this discussion, and it is what happened with the rest. Because clients that come to me, eh, there are some who ask for RSS, but most of the clients that come to me as a productivity person, they don't read RSS. Okay, They are looking for, I have this number of reading material, books, mm-hmm. stuff. Okay, And their concern is, what are they going to do with that? And some of them are stuff that they want to be able to find, be able to search, be able to use again, and what to do with that. And for me, that comes into two categories, okay? Actual books, they live in Kindle, okay? I can open the Kindle in almost any device, even including the Peloton. You can open a Kindle book there if you want to. Okay. Anywhere you think you can open a Kindle book and that is for reading. Okay. And what happened with the other things? Hey, I have a brochure. Hey, I have a PDF. I have something else, or I have a stuff that I want to annotate, or I have a notebook that I, okay, I finished with this notebook, but the information in here may be important for me to reference later. For my, I used to, and, and I put the disclaimer that I am now um, expert in or affiliate with Good Notes. I begin working with Good Notes when they were only iPad only, and it was fantastic. And I have now a significant size library of PDF with annotation notebooks, and I recommend it everywhere. One of the things I like about them is they have grown now to Windows, to Android, to the web. So you can access your notebooks almost anywhere. And Mm -hmm. you can handwrite with a pencil on the iPad, or you can type in that thing. Uh, And it's very, very, very flexible because it has all the advantages of the digital with all the benefits of the old pen and paper that you can do drawings and writings and stuff. And it's really, really permissive. You know, I have a client who, according to this client, whose handwriting is awful, okay? And it's fine, okay? My handwriting Mm -hmm. is awful too, okay? Except I have seen her handwriting and it's not, okay? (laughs) But in my case, okay, it is. But she have good notes, okay, on a side screen, on a second screen, mm-hmm. and it's open as she works. And that is her notebook as she used to have it on the desk, except that now it's searchable and very, very fast and very, very effective. And that's one thing that gets to be very powerful. Good notes, you can do folders to sort the things, you can favorite, you can do many, many things. 
and turn that dream of have all the paper that you need in one place. Mm -hmm. I share with you that I am in a project right now uh, going back to school because of a project. And well, part of the thing is the amount of reading. Okay, we are three weeks into this program and it is around 800 pages of reading. Okay, and there, um, there is me coming with my iPad only and coming into class with a little iPad mini and 800 pages already highlighted or whatever. And came this other gentleman looking at me, okay, not in a friendly way and not, not for any reason, but he's looking at me as he carry two folders okay paper folders okay mm -hmm. of the stuff that and he's looking at me like where is your paper and i show my ipad and he looked at me you know again not in a friendly way okay mm -hmm. he was like what do you mean so i put it all in pdf I scanned what it was not in pdf and now i carry everything in here and it comes back to what is the goal of this show you know, it's how you work. This is a person who is not very techy. That's the reason he was printing. It is done necessarily wants to be or learn to be very mm -hmm. techy. So what I help with is I find a solution that was as close as possible as his phone, because his argument is I cannot read this, you know, 800 pages on my phone. I want something larger. So we look into a tablet show him a couple of options and he will it's an older person and and he told me i'm very uncomfortable with that thing i want a laptop so we end up looking for a chromebook that mm -hmm. was a flip chromebook so that way he can use it as a laptop whenever he wants or he can flip it and use it vertical to read in and annotate and all this so these are the things where all this collection of documents have changed used to be even mm -hmm. when you think of the old days of the google reader okay it was on your computer and that was very much your option then now you have the phone you have all this and what happened is most people again it's not techie are not willing to take the jump and the risk because they don't know. And this is where here these discussions, in my opinion, are valuable because we have played with this technology when this technology was insane to use. Now that it's getting very, very, very cool, okay, we can even share more things that everybody can benefit out of this. I agree completely. This is it's a big step in the right direction. So as we kind of hit the end of this, what would be the one piece of advice that you could give somebody who maybe isn't a user of a feed reader and is thinking about you know, maybe just setting up a free account or actually doing a paid account? How do you think they should get the most out of it right away? My first question will be, how this technology will change your reading of the web habits. Why? Because the last thing you want to create is another bucket that you are going to feel bad. The second question is what happened if you cannot read? For example, you mentioned in the show, I have a folder called Android that has 500 articles. I'm mm -hmm. never reading that. That's fine. Okay. But you are conscious that that folder you don't read. You are not feeling bad or guilty because that thing has 500 articles. Then it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. The thing to be careful is, are you going to look the 500 and feel bad? Because if you do that, you are not going to open the app to read the other articles. No, so I, I, yeah. Those will be I, my two things to consider. I agree completely. That's, that's very much the same type of advice I would give. Uh, just because you're using a feed reader, this is not a an obligation to read these things. It is an awareness tool. It is designed to scrape and gather and populate this in front of you in a convenient manner. But it's your choice still. You can go through and you can just say, yep, I'm going to declare bankruptcy in this folder, delete all of it, and start over. 
you're not losing anything with these kinds of tools. It's just mm -hmm. that awareness. You can always go back, and especially the way they've improved on them, you can go back and search on a topic and it will go find a lot of this stuff. So right. no, don't don't feel the easiest thing that is that occurs with these is to feel overwhelmed. Don't feel overwhelmed. It is just an opportunity to put a lot of this stuff that you have a lot of manual effort into one place. Then you can parse it as you want. Mm -hmm. All right. That sounds good. Well, I hope people get started into feed readers. If you have any questions, uh, if you're starting to use one and you're like, I don't know what the heck to do with this, uh, you can get a hold of Agusu and I both over at the Personal Productivity Club. And we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to hear how you're either putting one to use or not using it yet and trying to figure out how to get going. Yeah, same thing with the books and the PDFs and all the other reading materials. What best practice can you share with us and share with everyone? So with that, follow us where you like to listen podcast, like us or subscribe and leave us a review. As we have always said on Art Set Today, you can interact with us on Personal Productivity Club. It's free, and you can just come to our channel. Uh, we are Augusto Pinot and Art Goodwix. See you next time on your favorite device. Thank you. <laughs>